Hi, it's Marguerite Brigham with AwakenMagic.com. Today I want to talk to you about healing. More importantly, the Chiron moving into Aries for the next eight years, meaning that it's going to be a decade of healing for all of us if we choose, if we want to be whole. So let me just share a little bit. Uh, about myself so I am um, a woman in my mid 50s and I started doing yoga in uh, the early 1990s fell in love with it became a yoga teacher uh, at the same time I was also doing um, my Reiki level one and two I didn't want to do my master because I was you know focusing on being a yoga teacher not a healer Interesting thing is, though, is that uh, I have been offering a lot of healing through my yoga classes and sessions. And what I've been doing for almost a decade, since 2009, was actually offering something that is quite healing, that it's... Um, my mother was the one who started yoga in the 1970s and her transformation totally impacted me. So it wasn't about her flexibility, but her serenity. And when my kids were young, I was emulating her when myself and my brothers were young, you know, screaming all the time and really low tolerance. So I asked her for her yoga books. When she passed away, I um, had a few of her books, and one of them, I found this cosmic breathing. And so in 2009 was the very first National Yoga Month, and I gave this as a gift, um, actually for the whole month. And so even though I've done all kinds of different yoga um forms very i'm very creative <laughs> uh so not only have i been a kerpalo yoga teacher i've done uh, yoga for golf i started that in 1997 uh, goddess yoga i started in 1999 and i transitioned to writing a book on um, golf goddess yoga which combined the yoga for golf and the goddess yoga and then i started bringing out magical goddess yoga but all the time um, as a pure service gift to humanity to raise the vibration and to be in the love frequency I've been giving the yoga cosmic breath and mainly online so I started through blogs and radio show videos I actually have a whole channel or playlist on my YouTube channel so I'll link that, Yoga Cosmic Love Breath, and how it's transitioned over the years. Well, I um, started noticing that by doing this, and I was raising my vibration, that the people close to me would become very argumentative. And um, I didn't really realize at the time that they just wanted me to go back to the lower vibration and so what, we, what I found was amazing. Um, I started doing some forgiveness work through the Course in Miracles and everything, but uh, the fastest tool was the whole Ho'oponopono. So I started using that. And the people around me then, as well as me doing the love breath to them, they started to lift their energy. So um, the, the time, each time that I, you know, went through a huge transition because I would do this cosmic love breath, you know, for equinoxes, solstices, on uh, key portal days. So that, uh, you know, <laughs> really up-leveled me quickly. And so I found that the people around me, I could... Um, help them rise their vibration really quickly too so the the 
times of being in discord got shortened and shortened and they didn't have to do any of the work so but what's um what's occurred is i i did a um and i have it on my channel that i in december i i combined the two so i i have a um, community magic waken community and so the past year or two i guess i've sort of been hiding out i've just really been teaching them initiating them into this yoga love <laughs> uh this connecting with the cosmos and um anchoring the light you know really being the link between heaven and earth so i'm going to now in 2018 bring it out for all of humanity so i set up a patreon page where i can actually see all the breadcrumbs all the cosmic breadcrumbs that i've left um it's wonderful they can all go on this one or they they are all being placed on this one page or i'm going to uh to write a book and so this part is going to be written into the book about the healing so i'm as i said that uh that was december 2017 so you know here here i have i don't think i was fully responsible by just teaching you know the feel good part because when you open up your heart you get all feelings and forgiveness is a huge key so that so i need to continue to combine the whole oponopono and the cosmic love breath for me what happened was i actually went into a healing crisis um and that's that was a, a lot of it was burnout and some of it was ascension symptoms i really saw that i was a caraholic and also that i have been in three major relationships of uh being an empath and having a narcissist narcissist i can't even say the word <laughs> in my life so what i've been um healing the last few months has been um where i've abandoned myself but i i actually want to share about the um the caraholic through um tom petty so he passed away last year and they say it was an accidental overdose from his uh oh hang on a sec sorry i was trying to trying to pull it up Let's see if i can pull it up here um let's see hopefully you can still hear me here anyways he was um yeah it says despite his um he had a lot of health problems so one of them was his hip i'm just gonna pull it up excuse me for a minute Oh, well, that's not it. Um, anyway, so despite his um, painful injury, he insisted on keeping his commitment to his fans. And he toured for 53 dates with a fractured hip. And as he did, it worsened to a more serious injury. On the day he died, he was informed that his hip had graduated to a full on break. And so the family said that. They feel that the pain was simply unbearable, and that was his cause for his overdose of medication. He had been prescribed painkillers, including fentanyl. 
uh, which is a drug linked to the deaths of Prince and rapper Lil Peep. How many people are on medication to not feel? So let me just share this. Um, I'm not an astrologer, but because I work with the planets, with the cosmos, with this cosmic breathing, I'm very interested. I, I, you know, perhaps I was in my past life. But this is um, written by Julian, Juliana McCarthy. And it may, uh, it may help you. So Chiron now moves into Aries. It's time for an era of deep healing. So on April 17th, for the first time in 51 years, Chiron will remain for a whole eight years into Aries. Representing the wounded healer. Chiron's shift into the first sign of the zodiac triggers a whole new phase of healing. He draws our pain to the surface so we can work with it more consciously. Chiron is our tenderness and vulnerability. It's our deepest wounds, which become a source of empathy for others. In this upcoming transit, we are pioneering new modalities of healing, calling on the power of earth, of things like mushrooms, plant medicines, herbalism and nutrition, to cure physical and mental imbalances. As we realign with nature, we're uncovering more holistic cures for mental and physical disease, along with social and environmental dilemmas. Since Aries rules the self, our self-reliance is also increasing over the next eight years. We're relying less on saviors and gurus and more on our own inner resources. Healing abilities are opening up in many of us we're learning to work with energy so we can heal ourselves then help others do the same since aries rules itself our self-reliance is also increasing over the next eight years okay sorry just uh i guess that needed to be said twice <laughs> since aries is ruled by mars we now have the chance to soften the masculine within within each of us it's time to work through our issues of anger and aggression, healing parts of ourselves that are prone to fighting and attacking others. Through this transit, we're, we're inhabiting our vulnerability with much greater tenderness and depth, both individually and collectively. We're drawing on our courage to face our inner turmoil and self-liberate. As we continue to dismantle the patriarchy and move into an age of the empowered feminine, we're learning that we cannot have a healthy feminine with a wounded masculine and vice versa. A new movement around masculine, masculinity could now arise alongside the Me Too movement, dismantling harmful conditioning from our culture and upbringing. Aries and Chiron teaches us that we are all worthy. We all deserve to express our feelings and have our desires met. Each of us has inner strength that can emulate from a balanced self sense of self-love. New role models may surface now, leading us toward deep and healthy change in the realms of masculinity and beyond. Aries rules violence by Chiron and again is the wounded healer. As we feel the effects of this transit, our suffering hearts tender and exposed, we might ask ourselves, how do we handle our pain and vulnerability? Do we shut people out and self-pity, or do we open to greater empathy for others? It's now time to harness our tenderness to connect with each other more meaningfully. We can notice other people's raw hearts as we walk down the making eye contact. I guess that's a walk down the road huh? or sidewalk while we share our mutual humanity. 
Surrendering to our pain, barriers between us can dissolve as we open to greater intimacy and interconnection. As Chiron moves into Aries, we may embrace our pain, celebrating the richness of our expanded hearts. As we heal, may we become healers for others, courageous warriors of tenderness and light. So that's exactly what I've been doing is extracting the painful wounds. Healing can be difficult. But if we ignore the thorns that are in our heart, we become increasingly toxic within our life. And that's what I was doing. I was so busy trying to survive. 2016, I'd moved so many times, three times. I've, you know, I've had to let go of things. I hardly have any possessions now. People, places, you know, maybe so I could be vulnerable enough to um, all the love that I've been giving to others to give it back to me. And it's interesting, a lot, of, a lot of the issues at first were on my left side. So I'm like, okay, well, that is the feminine. You know, I've been bringing forth the feminine, but I haven't just really emulated the feminine in being. I've been doing, doing, doing. So being, and as I'm being, I've been getting so many snippets from spirit so I can write this book. So I, I don't have so many distractions. So the book that's already been half written can come forth. So one of the... Um, ways the pain has been softened is through music. Yeah, I have a, um, a whole channel called Hillbilly Hippie with my partner. And, um, you know, we, on the weekends we, we record songs, but, um, you know, we sing a lot. That's really been helping heal. So which emotions are you afraid to feel? You know, if we're afraid to feel failure, we won't take chances. If we're afraid to feel rejection, we won't love fully. If we're afraid to feel anger, we won't stand up for ourselves. Learning to experience these scary emotions skillfully without resistance or reactivity is a surefire path to fulfillment. So I, um, I'm going to definitely put the link down to where you can um, connect with me in community. And uh, it's uh, a beautiful way to tip or, you know, tithing, um, spiritual, spiritual gifts that are giving, you can give back. And sometimes, right now, while we're still in 3D anyways, seems that currency has to be the, the commitment. So I encourage you to commit to your own healing it's time that we're in right now it's very very interesting because um i'm in ontario and the past weekend we just had an ice storm and at the same time my um friend is going to disney so she doesn't know 
any of the, the newer movies. So she was asked to watch Frozen. And so in Frozen, you know, she had to control her gifts. She had to conceal and not feel. And, you know, we go back to Star Trek, right? What was the, the great thing about humans is we feel. Well, we've been, the dark forces have wanted us to be, to do anything but heal, to stay in our heads because we're easily controlled. We're in fear and they can feed off that. We're much more powerless. When we're in our hearts and we're feeling, well, that's following our intuition, following our, our inner light, our inner verse. So you don't need a guru. That love is within you. And it was, it was with Mother Mary in 1995. It was grace. This, this, a tsunami of love washed over me. And I was searching for this love. I'd never felt it from a human. I still have never felt it from a human. But it was the cosmic love breath. So, you know, accidentally, <laughs> if you will, I can see it's my destiny, that um, I brought forth this as a way to celebrate yoga and introduce people to it. It's a pranayama, though. It's, a, it's part meditation, part breathing, pranayama breathing, which is so wonderful for healing. And um, an energy tool. I didn't realize it was an energy tool at the time. And I also didn't realize it was connected to a promise that I made my granddaughter when our hearts actually became one when she was just a few weeks old. And I made a heart promise to help make the world be better for her and all children. So it's, it's I'm seeing now that I put the Patreon page together that it's really the mother's love. So not only is it, is, it, is it been from Mother Mary, but it's, you know, connected to my mother, to me as a mother, and as a grandmother. And that's, yeah, I've been um, doing the whole Oponopono, which is to make right, it's to re release like it's to clean, 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 clean of beliefs and of conditionings. And, and so, you know, all our fairy tales growing up, there, was, there wasn't a loving mother. There was a wicked stepmother or no mother. So we haven't really had role models. And, and again, maybe it's just this feeling, this feeling of this love. That comes through so it's with consistency that that love is right within you it's not it's not about you know finding it through someone else and how much love can you stand when we breathe in and out this love from our heart from our own inner verse back to the infinite source back to different planets you'll find your capacity for love will grow by leaps and bounds so let's take a moment to to do that let's if you want place your hand on your heart or both hands And bring to mind someone that you love or something. It could be an animal. It could even be a place. I always start with my granddaughter. And so from your heart, you're going to inhale and send your love to that person person, place, animal's heart, and exhale the love back to your heart and down to the crystalline core of the earth, 
Inhale out the new 5D earth to your heart. Out. And exhale the love back to your heart. And Chiron. Chiron was a planet that was discovered in 1977. And it was named after the Greek centaur, a magical being who has become known to modern astrologers and researchers as the wounded healer. What's interesting is um, the wounded child needs to be healed before we can be whole adults. So notice the similar chi, the C-H-I, is in the world word child. It's in the word chiron. And linked to chi as the word for energy in China. So as we send our love to it, it can help open up to the lost innocence of childhood, into joy and purity and the wonder of childlike consciousness. And this is our work collectively and individually for the next eight years. So Chiron is healing and ageless wisdom teachings so you don't have to know what chiron looks like so for and as we do this as we send our love and receive our love we're, we're getting our getting help we're getting assistance so we inhale from our heart to the heart of chiron the energy exhale Chiron's love to our hearts, send it down to the Earth's heart. Inhale up the Earth's heart, mingling with our heart energy, our love, out to Chiron. Exhaling Chiron's love to our heart and drop that down, down, down to the heart of the Earth. Inhaling up the earth's love, mingling with our love out to Chiron, then exhaling Chiron's love to our heart. It's going into Aries, which is uh, ruled by Mars. So let's see the red planet Mars. Inhale our love to Mars. Exhale, Mars's love to our heart. Both that energy goes down to the earth, mingles with the earth, and we bring it Earth's love, mingling more with our love out to Mars. Exhale, Mars's love to our heart, down to the earth. Inhale the crystalline core, the love, the new earth up. Our expanded heart out to Mars. Exhale Mars's love to our heart. We'll ba balance that with the planet of love, Venus, which incidentally is my planet. I'm a Taurus. <clears throat> No, uh, no irony there that I'm bringing forth love for so many years. Expanded cosmic love for my cosmic brothers and sisters and all of, all of humanity. This has codes. Codes for the rainbow warriors, for the crystal and indigo children. So you can just see, just imagine that Venus is just in front of us. So your breath doesn't have to be really deep. The deeper the breath, though, the longer we, the longer we live in yoga teachings. Our breath is 
long and deep also calms our mind and body, cleans our system. Okay, that's a lot in between there. <laughs> it's just coming through. It's just coming through. Okay, so Venus. Inhale our love to Venus. Exhale Venus's love to our heart. Mingling, going down to the earth. Inhale, crystalline core of the earth's love, our love, out to Venus. Exhale, Venus's love to our heart, down to the earth. Inhale, the earth's love, our love, out to Venus. Then exhale, Venus's love to our heart. You see that we are just a link between the cosmos and the earth connecting. And our own unique signature is being added. Okay, so that's time's up. <laughs> you can do, you see, this is one at a one time to the cosmos. So I invite you to... Send it to your higher self, to Mother Mary, if you want, or, or any of the goddess. It can be done to um, for loved ones, even if they are deceased, uh, any of the other planets. And if this has served you and you would like to give a tip, $2, $5, um, you can go over to the page and, and then, yeah, you will be a member, part of a community. And, um, you know, I, I have been doing this as a solo project and I can't do it anymore. Um, just even holding the light and um, coming forward to, you know, I guess the doors are open, but I want to do a 30-day launch. I was, uh, you know, I was thinking I could do a, like a magical May and we could, uh, we could do this every day for 30 days. But again, I can't do it on my own. So um, maybe it won't be May because it's mid-April now. Depends if I could help. <laughs> so thank you all for being here, for participating. Big love and um, I, can, I need to somehow you know, get back to my meeting. <laughs> okay. Bye now.